All right, welcome back, ladies and gents. Mr. Martin here. We are on 9.3 factoring quadratics, non monic trinomials. Now, last time we did monic trinomials, meaning that the coefficient, the leading coefficient rather, was a 1. Um, this time we're going to talk about non monic quadratic trinomials, and then we're also going to use that famous zero product rule because we want to solve these and actually find these zeros. Take a look down here. We got our giant array of standards that we are covering with this content and then we have our sections here from the engage text. So let's jump right into our things to know. A non-monic quadratic trinomial is a quadratic trinomial whose leading coefficient is not one, meaning it can be greater than one and it can also be less than one. So any number bigger than one or less than one could mean a fraction so you might need to be ready for something like that but we also want to consider these things when we start factoring the first thing that we do is we take a look at what's in front of us we want to ask ourselves is it in standard form that is hugely important always put it in standard form if it is not uh, can it even be factored sometimes they cannot remember we need two numbers to multiply to make C that also add up to B. So if they don't do that, then we cannot factor it. Um, we also want to factor out a GCF. Remember from 9.1, uh, if you can find a GCF, we always take those out first. And then remember, we look at those signs of the B and C terms. That kind of helps us understand at the end, are we looking at a plus plus or a plus minus, something like that. And then we might have some special case quadratics, sum of squares, difference of squares. So remember, those are from 9.2 you're gonna to need to remember what these guys look like all right let's jump into it first we got our first example and we are factoring the same way that we did in the last section we are factoring by grouping meaning we take that a term and we multiply it to our C term so let's go ahead and do that a times C that is gonna give me 40 okay and then I am simply finding my factors of 40 which are gonna be 1 and 40 2 and 20, 4 and uh, 4 and 10, and then looks like we can stop there because we need two numbers to add up to 22. If we look here, we got a plus and a plus. That means down here, right? I am going to end up with a plus and a plus. That's what that's going to look like. Okay, so we already know that based off of what we got here. So two numbers to add up to 22. Looks like I found it already right here, 2 and 20. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. Remember, this first term, we drop it down. This middle term, we're going to split up using this sum of terms. So we got plus 2n plus 20n, and then we drop down our c term. Okay, I don't want you guys to get confused and drop down the AC term. We're always dropping down the C term. All right, and then let's go ahead and group these guys. I'll do it in green. And then what's our GCF here? We got a N, it looks like. And then we're going to be left with 5N plus 2. And then our GCF here of our second group looks like a positive 4. And that's going to give us another... 5n plus 2. Remember, we are trying to make these match. These are good to go. So now we got n plus 4 and 5n plus 2. And remember, what did I tell you? It is going to be plus and plus. So this is our positive c and positive b value. Positive c and positive b. If we take a look, uh, take a look at the next one, we got a negative b and a positive c. That means we are looking for two negative numbers. So let's do our a times c. We got 4 times 54. Um, remember, have a nice little calculator with you. 54 times 4, 216. Boom, easy. So let's type that in. 216. Type that in. Write that in, Mr. Martin. You're not typing anything, you bozo. All right, so we know we probably won't get any smaller than 4 right because that's probably not going to add up to 33 right now 54 and 4 is going to be 58 if we were to add those up so let's just start with that let's kind of go up when you get these big numbers it becomes a little bit difficult um, you might just have to try a few things 216 divided by 6 let's see what that gives me 
that gives me 36. Well, 36 plus 6, is that going to give me 33? Nope, still too high. Let's try 8. So 216 divided by 8, that gives me 27. 27 plus 8 is 35, really close. Maybe 9 goes into it. Let's try that. 216 divided by 9, 24. 24 plus 9 does give me 33, but I want a negative 33, so negative 24 plus negative 9. Boom, I have found my two factors. Let's go ahead and rewrite this. 4m squared minus 9m, group them, minus 24m plus 54, and group them. All right, looks like we can only take out an M, so I'm left with 4M minus 9. Here, let's see, 6. Remember, if you got a negative, you always want to take out the negative. So I'm going to take out negative 6. Looks like I'm left with 4M minus 9. These are good to go. They match. So I got M minus 6 and 4M minus 9. Very good not so bad all right looking at the last one we got minus and minus oh so here we got the negative c term that means instead of finding the sum of terms we are looking for the difference of terms so let's do our a times c 60 times 3 i don't need a calculator for that that is going to be 180. okay i'm going to draw my t chart okay the way I like to do the negative C terms, remember, I am looking for the difference. So I need to find two numbers that have a distance or difference of eight units between them. So let's try, if we just did our three and 60, how many distance units or difference of units are between 60 and three? Well, 60 minus three is 57. There's 57 numbers between these. I'm looking only for eight numbers. So let's just maybe jump it up to 9. Well, 9 goes into 180 how many times? Uh, 20, because if we did 9 times 2, that'd be 18. 9 times um, 10 would be 90. 90 and 90 is 180. So 20 and 9, they have about 11 between them. So here we went from 57. Here we're difference of 11. So it looks like we're getting smaller. Let's try the next number up. So 10 times what gives me 180? That would be 18. And does it look like we have a difference of eight units? We're looking for eight units. Well, 10 to 18, you would need to uh, have eight units. So that looks like what we're looking for. And remember, if you have a negative C term, apply the sign of your B term to your bigger factor. So 10 and 18, 18 is the bigger factor. I put the negative there and then the positive here. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. 3x squared, we're going to do plus 10x. We're going to group those, and then we're going to do minus 18x. And then we're going to do minus 60. All right, 3x squared and 10x, looks like we can take out an x. And we got 3x plus 10. Looks like the biggest thing that we can take out here, uh, maybe a negative 6. And then we got 3x plus 10. So these are the same. We are good. So now we got x minus 6. And we have 3x plus 10. All right. So not much different from when our coefficient of, uh, was 1. We just have a larger set of factors that we have to go through. And this was our same three different types of examples. We had plus plus, minus plus, and then that negative C term. All right, very good. That is example number one. Example number two, factor each non-monic quadratic trinomial. And then if it cannot be factored, right, cannot be factored. So remember, we want to think of that list. Is it in standard form? Can it be factored? Is there a GCF? And do I have special cases? Well, if I look at 1878 and 60, is there anything I can take out? Is there a GCF? Well, we can't take out a variable, but it looks like we can take out a number. And the GCF of this expression is 6. 
So this is now going to change to 3n squared. Uh, 78 divided by 6 is going to be 13. So we got 13n, and then we have positive 10. So now this 6 is just going to sit on the outside. We are going to do our a and our c values. 3 times 10 is going to give me 30. Okay. I am looking for them to add up to 13. No longer 78 because we already took out that GCF. So I got 1 and 30. 3 and 10. Oh, 3 plus 10 equals 13. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Let's go ahead and rewrite this. We got 3n squared plus 3n. And then we got plus 10n plus 10. All right, we're going to group this and group this, group this and group this. 3n squared and 3n. Looks like I can take out a 3n. 3n squared divided by 3n is going to leave me an n. 3n divided by 3n is going to be a positive 1. Here it looks like I can take out a positive 10. And then I'm going to be left with 10 and n plus 1. All right, 3n plus 10. And then I also have n plus 1. All right, so I do want to say, if you take a look at the filled out version of the notes, I actually swapped these around. I did 3n squared plus 10n and um, 3n plus 10, and it will work exactly the same. It doesn't matter if these are flip-flop. Your GCF will just look a little different. So I do want you to take a look at the notes and see what is different from this example and what I have in the filled out notes. All right, is there a GCF here? Doesn't look like it to me. 21 times 4 is going to give me, was that 21, 42, 84. So we got 84. All right, what are my factors? We got 1 and 84, 2 and 42. Ah, these fours, man, this stupid pen. All right. Sorry, guys, complaining a little bit. And then I got 3 and 28, 4 and 21. Let's see, what did I tell you? These fours. Uh, 4 and 21, 16 and 14, and then 12 and 7. Do any of these have a difference of 7 between them? Scanning, scanning, scanning. Well, 6 and 14, that is about what 8 and then 12 and 7 is 5 it does not so this one cannot be factored we cannot find something to satisfy them adding up to this positive 7 so there is no difference of 7 units between any of these factors so we are going to write cannot be factored all right, and then this last one. Oh, look, we only have two terms. Where is our constant? Well, we have a constant of zero. Um, do we need to do an AC method? Seven times zero would be zero. Oh, this looks like something found from 9.1. Okay, this is a quadratic. It is just not a quadratic trinomial. We simply just need to factor out a GCF here. So we would be left with n times 7n minus 9. Not that bad, so don't let this one fool you. You might see some stuff from 9.1. All right, very good. Example number two is finished. Let's jump to example number three. Um, this one is, uh, there's six problems here. I'm going to do uh, the first three really quickly, and then I'm going to have you guys pause the video and do the next three. Um, can I factor anything out? I cannot, so I got an AC method of 21. Then it looks like 1 and 21, 3 and 7. Uh, I got negative plus, so I need two negative numbers. That will work here. So we got 7k squared minus 3k minus 7k uh, plus 3. Group and group. Uh, looks like I can take out a k. Then I'm left with 7k minus 3. There's nothing common between these, but I do got to take something out, and I have a negative out front, so I always want to take out a negative. In this case, I can take out a negative 1, and what is that going to do? It's going to change the signs of both of these terms, which is exactly what I'm looking for because I need these two 
to match. So we got k minus 1 uh, times 7k minus 3, and that is going to be set equal to 0. And then now I just find my zeros. So k minus 1 equals 0. This is that zero product rule. Set this equal to 0, and we get k equals 1. Okay, we're going to set this equal to 0, and we're going to get k is equal to add the 3, divide by the 7. So positive 3 divided by 7. Boom, very easy. All right, next one. Can we take out a GCF? No, but we got an AC of 10 times 10 is going to be 100. We got a positive and a positive, so I'm looking for two of them to add up to 29. Uh, let's see. Well, 2 and 50 would make 100. What about 4? 4 and 25. 25 plus 4, that is my 2. Boom. See, look how easy it is to find these sometimes. So let's go ahead and rewrite my favorite part of the day. 10x squared plus 4x plus 25x plus 10. All right, I'm going to group and I'm going to group. GCF looks like 2x, so I'm left with 5x plus 2. Here it looks like a positive 5 comes out, and I'm left with 5x plus 2. I got 2x plus 5 times 5x plus 2 equal to 0. And then I just set this and this equal to 0, and I am going to get x is equal to, let's just do that here. 2x plus 5 equals 0, 5x plus 2 equals 0. Remember, opposite of this, so positive 5, I'm going to have a negative 5 divided by the 2. So negative 5 halves. Opposite of 2 is negative 2 divided by the 5, negative 2 fifths. All right, last but not least, uh, can we take a GCF? No, so we got 5 times 20, so we got another one with 100 here. And I want my terms to have a difference of 21 between them. So I am looking at... Mm, 4 and 25 again? Yep, they got a dis uh, difference of 21, but this time one of them needs to be negative, and that is going to be the bigger factor. So we got negative 25 and positive 4. Look at that. All right, so we got 5x squared plus 4x minus 25x minus 20. Remember, drop down, split, drop down. All right, GCF is going to be X, and then we got 5X plus 4. Here I'm going to take out a negative 5, and then I got 5X plus 4. So we got X minus 5, and we also have 5X plus 4. So my answers are going to be positive 5 and negative 4 fits. Remember, sometimes your answer might look like this. It could look like this. Sometimes it asks for set notation. Um, always do what the question is asking you. All right, so I want you to pause the video. Try the next three on your own. Come on back and take a look. All right, welcome back. So I ended up getting negative 3 for this one right here. If you took a look, this one turned out to be a perfect square. After you took out the 4, we have a perfect square trinomial, which is v plus 3. And if you are squaring that, that means it's v plus 3 and v plus 3. So we actually only have one answer for this one. And uh, there might be a good question in there about when would we see only one zero in a quadratic. All right, the next one was a difference of squares. After you took out that 2, we were left with two perfect squares and a minus sign. So we had p plus 3, p minus 3. We got solutions of negative 3 and positive 3. 
All right, and then the last one was not in standard form. We had to move that three over. Then we factored and we got three and negative one seventh. All right, and last but not least, we have a nice little application problem. It says the area of the rectangle uh, is represented by the expression 18x squared plus 12x plus two. Write two expressions to represent the dimensions. The length is known to be twice the width. All right, go ahead and pause it here and then come back. I'm gonna work it out for you, but I'd like you to try it on your own before we start talking about it. So go ahead and pause the video and then come on back. All right, now that you got all that stuff written on your paper because you tried this before you came back from unpausing, uh, let's talk about it. So we have the area here. Remember, we know that area is something times something. Remember, we got uh, width and length, right? So this is gonna be length times width. Uh, let's go ahead and factor this because remember factoring means we have something times something right so let's see what we can do here so we got 18 x squared plus 12 x plus 2 remember first thing can we take out a GCF it looks like we can we can take out a 2 so we're left with 9 x squared plus 6 x plus one. All right, let's go ahead and factor this. We got nine times one. Our AC is going to be nine. Our factors are one and nine, three and three. Does it look like we got two of them that will add up to six? Sure does. We got plus and plus. So remember, this two is just sitting on the outside. We have nine x squared plus three x plus 3x plus 1 split and these are our drop downs let's go ahead and group and group so we got a group here we got a group here and our GCF is gonna be 3x so we are left with uh, 3x plus 1 and then 3x plus 1 looks like we can only take out a 1 and we still get 3x plus 1 which is what we are looking for so it looks like our factors are 3x plus 1 and 3x plus 1 well we have a rectangle here and it doesn't look like our length and width are the same so let's go back and check out the information that it gave us it says the length is known to be twice the width. Well, something twice the width means we are multiplying it by two. Oh, look, we have a two right here that we can multiply one of these two because if these are the same, one of these will be twice that amount, which is what we're doing if we distribute this in. So we're gonna have a six X plus two, and then we have a three X plus one. So we know our length is gonna be the bigger one because it is double the other one so we got 6x plus 2 and then our width is 3x plus 1 and we are done alright so that was 9.3 factoring uh, non monic trinomials we had all of these leading coefficients greater than 1 um, so go ahead and make sure you do the practice um, just takes a little bit of time you will get faster with these the hardest part is probably finding those factors use a calculator to help you play around try dividing it by some of those numbers until you get some whole numbers and find those two factors that make up your b term all right it's been a pleasure i will catch you on the next one it's been a blast peace out